and all so time, good. All the time. Amen. Amen. And so there's something about praise when you fight in this battle. And I wish I could tell you that this battle was going to go away, beloved. I wish I could tell you that Satan was just going to retreat and, and put his head in the sand. And, but he's going to do all he can to discourage you, That's to right. hinder you, to stop you. But I just want to remind you that this is God's battle. That this is the Lord's fight. Amen. And it is our weapon of praise. It is our weapon of worship. It says that the demons believe and they tremble at the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so when you're going through a battle, when you're going through a struggle, if you could just praise him, if you could just thank him, if you could just worship him, if you could just give him glory, amen. amen. Let me tell you, there is something about the presence of God that comes yes. when we give amen. him praise. Yes. Because the devil hates the fact that we give him praise. He wanted to steal your praise. He wanted his, to be God. He wanted to be your God. But you said, no, devil, you are not my God. I will worship the Lord and serve him only. And there is power, church. There is power when we begin to praise him. Amen. So let's just worship him this morning.
just be raised unto me. Yes. And I shall make a way where there's no way, just like I led those Israelites, my people, out of Egypt. And I paid that way. I, I just wiped the sea. I just opened up the seas for them to cross. God is saying right now, I shall open the ways for you. I shall open everything, all the avenues that will be available for you. I shall open them because I love you just Thank like you, I Father. love my people. You are my people. Oh, Father God, I thank you for all of everyone, God, who's got this needs. Father God, each and every one, even myself, oh God, there are so many people in countless walls that we don't even understand why this happening. But God, you have a purpose. You have a purpose for all of this. We go through so that we can be like silver. We shall be like gold. Chasten, Father God, and be for your glory. Father God, make a way for those who are still in the dark. Make a way for them to see the light. Make a way that they know your way is the only way that they cannot go to the right or to the left. But on that cross, straight and narrow road, Father God, that they might reach the glory, the prize that you have for them. Oh, Father, I thank you for your praise. I thank you that you're answering prayers. I thank you, Lord, that you're looking down from heaven and you haven't failed any one of your child or children, yes, Father God.
give us strength into that day, Lord. Help us into that day, Lord. Yes. Carry us, Lord. Yes. Until that day. Yes, Lord. Someday. So just a few announcements that we have. Nothing, nothing new. Thank you so much for um, doing that projector. Really appreciate it, Donnie. I thank the Lord that yeah. I'm gonna thank the Lord that Tony's here for the first time. So yes. greet him. Amen. Let him know you're praying for him and that we can help you up here. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Lord, Darren. It's good to see you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Darren, 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 Darren House and Jacob and Amelia. What a blessing. So yeah. good to see you guys. Amen. And so, um, and so just a few announcements. Um, this Wednesday we'll be here at 5 o'clock. Um, if you guys want to come eat and come hang out with us. Um, also, um, Friday at 7 o'clock we have First Day Fellowship. Um, awesome ministry. Pastor Mark and uh, Dina Williams. Um, if you know someone, and then let them know. Let them know. Amen. Amen. Do you guys have flyers in the back right there? I, I got to restore. I got to put okay. more. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let them know. For Thursday is going to be Ezra, yes. Esri's Women's Fellowship. Yes. And um, that's going to be at 11 a.m.? Yes. Sir. It's going to be 11 a.m. here at the church, as well as you can catch her on Messenger Facebook. It is a yes. women's yes. ministry for women. And so if you know some women that need some prayer, that need some encouragement, let them know about Esri Women's Fellowship this Thursday. And, that, and that's a blessing. Sunday's prayer at 930 um, also 10.45 a.m. We do have a food ministry. Um, <clears throat> if anybody's in need, and come see us. Um, and we can go to a food bank on the third Saturday. Um, we probably need to stock up because it's been a little bit. So if anybody has need of uh, food. We also have a clothing ministry. Um, I got some new donations right now. It's a lot of women clothing. But it's nice clothing. It's decent clothing. But if anybody who's in need, and so um, just let them know. And, um, and I think that's about it. Huh? Oh, I said I have more and I forgot to bring them. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, Monday, the second Monday of the month is is, um, is men's discipleship. You've never been to my pastor's church. You get a chance to meet them. They're awesome men of God. Amen. Amen. Um, they're really loving. They're really caring. They're really supporting. Um, and I want you to think we're just by ourselves. We do have a church that's behind us. Amen. And so that's men's discipleship at 730 on the second Monday of every month. We also have women's discipleship at 7 o'clock. And so that's awesome when the women gather together. And so you're welcome to come be part of that. And um, yeah, and that's all the announcements that I got. We're just going to um, take up our offering, whatever God has put in your heart to give to the Lord. Um, one thing I want to say about, you know, giving to the Lord, just make sure that you have a cheerful giver, that you have a cheerful heart. Yes. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And it's better to give because it's in your heart to give, not because it's out of compulsion or out of guilt or out of fear. Amen. Give because it's in your heart to give to the Lord. Amen. And I'll ask Pastor Jeff, you just pray for that offering. 
Oh, we thank you, God, for this offering. We thank you, Lord, for always keeping the doors open and making a way where there sometimes seems to be no way. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God will make a way. You know this line? When it seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide and hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. Amen. Amen. God will Amen. make a way. Amen. God is there. Right back there. Amen. Yeah, I learned that one faster. Oh, yeah, there was a guy that used to sing. He was actually um, in a wheelchair. He got shot. His name was uh, Joseph, and he did a Bible study when I was in the county jail. He was a backslidden Christian that was fighting a life sentence um, in the county jail. And um, he was one of my mentors, one of my first mentors. And he used to always sing that song. And uh, he actually got out of prison. Amen. Uh, got out of jail. He appealed. He was, you know, falsely accused, and he actually got out. It was pretty amazing. And he used to always cling to that song and hold on to that song. He had a lot of faith. And um, that's such a beautiful song because God will make a way. And so when there seems to be no way. Amen. And so we're, we're so blessed that we have um, associate pastors here. And then they've been such a blessing. And then they have helped uh, with the children's ministry. They have helped with the clothing ministry. They have helped with worship. Amen. They have helped when I've been sick. Amen. And not able to come. They have helped and been faithful um, through it all. And we are so blessed that they are uh, part of this ministry. And we're blessed to have them. And I love Pastor Mark's heart. I love the vision that God has given him. And I love um, the things that he shares in his heart because they're just right on. Amen. And they're the word of God. Who can argue with the word of God? Amen. Amen. I don't want to argue with the word of God. <laughs> Amen. And so let's just pray for our associate Pastor Mark as he ministers this morning, which is a blessing because I'm a little bit under the weather. My voice is kind of already going Amen. Up. So let's just pray for Pastor Mark. Just reach your hands out. Lord, we just yes, thank you, Lord. God, for thank the calling. You on this man's life, for the calling on Pastor Dina's life, God. We just thank you for his ministry, God. Yes. We thank you that he ministers to the prisoner, Father God. Yes. Whether they're on the streets or whether they're in prison, God, he ministers to the prisoner, Lord God. And I pray that you bless him, God. Bless his ministry, God. Keep your hand upon it, Father God. Bless the calling, God. Thank you that you have so much more for him, Lord God. That this is just a beginning, God. Just a little glimpse, Lord God, of the calling on his life, God. We believe in it, Lord God. And I pray you bless Bless him, anoint him, God, anoint his lips, God, open our hearts, God, that we can speak, Lord, that he will speak through him, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for Pastor Mark. Jesus. Yes, we are going to have communion after you. Okay, pray. amen. Amen. Let me clear this off for you. Yeah, I take up a little bit more space, right? <laughs> <laughs> are you good to move this table, or are you good right there? Yeah, I could, uh, I could just move it back a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Just in case I don't bump it, you know. Knock it over, amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody on Facebook. Good morning. Um, you got enough room to move right the guitar? Oh. Do you want me to move that guitar? No, 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 I'll just uh, gonna move this a uh, little bit to the side like this. Yep. If I can. Yeah. All right. So, how's everybody? Good. How's everybody's week? Good. It's kind of crazy, it's right? Yeah. Life is challenging, guys. Um, you know, it's a it's it's a tough gig, you know, and you know a lot of people are hurting right now. Um, you know, when you're in ministry, you you hear that. You know, I was able to go. I was blessed enough to go into the, the jails this morning. And only to, only uh, for my dad. Use the oh, use the mic for yeah. pop. Okay, you got me. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, microphones. I'm not used to them. Okay? <laughs> But you better get used to it because you're in ministry, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I was able to go into the jails and people are hurting. You know, people, um, they, they need to know that God loves them. And as an evangelist, which I am, God has called me to evangelism. I have one goal. And that's to get names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Right? Amen. That when I come into the house of God, when people come into the house of God, they leave knowing that God loves them. That he sent his son to die for them. Right? Amen. Yes. That he rose from the dead. Right on the third day, as Pastor was saying, and then he sits at the right hand of God, uh, interceding for them day and night, the sinner, right? That's us, right? Yes. Right? And that they leave Holy Spirit filled, saved, right? And born yes. again. Yeah. That's, my, that's my calling. My calling as an evangelist is to make sure that people have a relationship with God and an understanding of who he is. 
And so on Friday, as you said, on, at First Day Fellowship, which I actually am a pastor of, and I also um, associate pastor here at Heart of the King, uh, which we have an awesome service here at 1045 on Sundays. Um, we want you guys to join us here. Um, on any day of the week, uh, there's ministries here that teach the Word of God. And, and uh, I'm blessed by the Word of God. Amen. And uh, on Fridays, we actually just started uh, the Hebrews, uh, the epistle of to the Hebrews, right? Um, theologians uh, don't know exactly uh, if it was Paul. They believe it was because he was in the, in the uh, nature of writing letters to the churches in that time. But they don't know for sure. But what we do know is the words in it are a blessing. Amen. Amen. And the book of Hebrews is where I'm going to be teaching out of today um, in chapter 1. And I believe uh, as an evangelist that it's so important to know who Jesus is. Right? That's right. You know, because even the demons know who Jesus is, right? Yeah. They believe yeah. in Jesus, per se. The Bible says yeah. that they know the name Jesus. And as a matter of fact, they tremble right. when they hear his name. Yeah. But my job as an evangelist is to make sure that you understand how much he loves you. Yes. And that you have a relationship with him. Right? Because a prayer life is just like marriage, right? If we don't tell our spouse that we love them, and we don't do our best to prove to them that we love them, then there's no relationship there. And so being a Christian isn't just going to church, it's loving God. Yeah. Just as much as he loves you in return, right. amen? Reciprocate. And being one with him, amen. that's marriage. Yeah. That's a relationship. Being one with your spouse. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. amen. Yes. And if yeah. not, we're not. Period. Right? Yeah. But we are the bride of Christ. All those in this room are saved, right? Sanctified, blood washed, yes. saints of the living God. Amen? Amen. And we're on our way to heaven. Amen. When God calls us, right? I was tired this morning. I'm jet lagged, right? Yeah. I was tired. I was like, I don't know if I can do this today. Yeah. But just like Lazarus, he died a happy death, right? He was yeah. he was saved, right? But God called him back, right? Yeah. He told me, get up and go. <laughs> Amen. You got to go this morning. <laughs> and so I had no choice. Amen. I couldn't sleep in this morning. I had to get up and go like Lazarus when he heard Jesus' voice. Amen. And so we're in the book of Hebrews on Friday night. So if anybody knows anybody uh, that needs a Bible study, um, I'm here. Uh, brothers that are faithful uh, that come on Fridays uh, are here. Um, and uh, we're getting blessed. And we just finished up the book of Matthew, which took us what 28 weeks right i mean yeah. because it's 28 we were in the red letter series and when we do a, a bible study it's it's dissecting the word of god right mm -hmm. it's actually understanding what it means you know i always say this and i i know i've said it many times when i first became a christian i was like i'm not jewish like what does this got to do with me right yeah. but it's to everyone who believes amen, amen. on the lord jesus christ and uh, it's for me the promises of abraham Right? And Isaac and Jacob are for me through our King, Jesus Christ. He is the high priest. And the book of Hebrews, actually the writer of Hebrews wants you to know that. He wants you to understand who Jesus is. Right? Yeah. That he is a high priest. That he is God That's right. in flesh. Amen. John 1 says, and the word was with God and the word it was, was God. God. Amen. Amen. Yes. He was in the beginning with God. Right? That's right. And his own rejected him. Mm -hmm. He was a light. And it talks about that in verse 3 and I'm going to read through and I'm going to just teach today if that's okay with you guys Amen. and it says God who in sundry times that's the King James which means various times and in diverse manners different ways per se spake in times past unto the fathers and by the prophets okay so at one time God and he still does have prophets speak in visions and in dreams in the last days I shall give young men dreams. Amen? Amen. And so prophets actually spoke to people visions of what God told them to say to the people. But he says this, the writer. He says, But hath in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom we made, by whom also made the worlds. Right? Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given unto me, Jesus said. Right? So Jesus is an heir but listen to this. You miss this when you're reading this. If you go back into Numbers 12, 6, and 8, I'm going to show you something that I was able to see for myself when I read it. 12, 6, and 8. Tony, Italiano. Mexicano. Hey, Mexicano. <laughs> Tony, welcome, brother. Yeah. Numbers 
12, 6, and 8. Mm. Anthony's a very predominant uh, Italian name. Yeah. Yeah. 12, 6, and 8. And it says, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. But he says about Moses, this isn't so. Check it out. He says, My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I speak mouth to mouth. So what the writer is saying here is something that we don't catch just as a reader when we kind of surface read it here, right? He's saying in these last days, God has spoken through his son mouth to mouth. That means that God is speaking to the disciples. Jesus was God. Amen. Amen. So if you ever hear the cults say that the Bible doesn't say that Jesus is God, they're liars and they don't know the truth. Because every single writer in this scripture, in the New Testament, believed that he was. That's right. Amen. Jesus Amen. said that I am he. And if you do not believe that, you will die in your transgressions. Jesus and the Father are one. I'm not going to fight with him over that. Uh -huh. right? That's right. He's got a higher position than I do. That's Amen. Right. I'm not going to tell him that he's somebody he said he was. I mean, I'm not going to tell him he's not somebody he said he was. That's right. Who, in, who being the brightness of his glory, okay, that caught me. That jumped out at me, okay? Because in Revelation, uh, it, it does say in Revelation chapter 21 and 23 that Jesus is the light of God's temple. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. God's light, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was to turn off all of these lights in this room... And God walked in, right? Would it shine? Uh, <laughs> Amen, right? Yeah. Well, the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus is God's shining. His apogazo, his brightness, right? And his glory. Jesus is God's glory. And the express image of his person. Mm. If you had seen me, you had seen the Father. Mm. That's what he said, right? That's right. Show us the Father that we might know him, right? That's right. And Jesus said... He said, haven't I been with you this yeah. long that you don't know me already? He who had seen me had seen the Father. Express image of his person and upholding all things by word of his power. Jesus said that everything I say, I only say that which the Father says. Amen. And so yesterday we actually were at um, a men's um, uh, discipleship, uh, a summer fest um, at Praise Chapel. And... One of the pastors actually that was there, I forgot his name, I do apologize, he's from Page Chapel. He said that we, uh, a son emulates the father, right? And he started to say that Jesus only did what the father did and that's what we should do, right? We should emulate the father. And so when we start acting like Mark, I act like Mark sometimes, right? Yeah. You act like Dina, right? you act like Christina, yeah. you act like Ryan, right? <laughs> Jeff acts like Jeff, right? <laughs> But when we emulate the Father, it doesn't look like us anymore. It looks like Jesus. Amen. It looks like Him. And so I got smacked up my head yesterday, and I had to say to myself, I don't always look like Jesus. I need to look like Christ more. Yeah. Because I'm not a bastard. Yeah. I have a Father. That's right. right? Amen. That's I'm right. not an orphan. I've been adopted by the Come King. On, right? Amen. Into the family of God Amen. through Jesus Christ. That's and right. so every time I say something, it better sound like Him. Or I should just probably shut my mouth. I sound like Bambi, right? Yeah. Or wait, was that Bambi? No, that was Thumper. Oh, Thumper. Right? Don't say nothing good. Don't say nothing yeah. at all, right? That's so funny. Mm. And it says right here, When he had himself, who being the brightness of his glory and the expect image of his person and upholding the things of the word of his power, when he by himself, Jesus said what? He said, I give my life. No one takes it, right? right. That's right. He says, I give my life freely, right? And I will raise it up by myself. This is what he said. It says, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. But Pastor Mark, you always talk about who Jesus is. I'm already a Christian. It's because it's my calling. Amen. It's my calling to remind you over and over and over who Jesus is. Because sometimes the enemy will send people to you to get you to doubt Next thing you know, you're not here. We don't see, hey, where's that brother that was sitting in that chair over there? Yeah. Oh, he joined that church down the street over there that doesn't teach who Jesus said he was. Yeah. Because Come we on. didn't do our job. Come Amen. On. And so I'm going to just keep pressing over and over to the people who have an ear. Let them hear what the Spirit of God says to the churches, who Jesus is. Who do men say that I am? 
Amen. 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 That's what they're doing nowadays. They're trying to shape and mold a Jesus to their own liking mm -hmm. in this day and age. That's right, they are. In the last days, the Bible says that they're going to give you pastors and teachers yeah. that are going to tickle your ears That's and tell you all the funny stuff that you want to hear, right? Yeah. But the Word of God is faithful and true, and it's not going to lead you unto death, but give you life. Amen? Amen. Yes. And so knowing who Christ Jesus is is everything. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. He at any time, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall to be me a son. And it's so funny that I'm in this because I've been conversating back and forth with this rabbi online, and he's yet to respond to me, by the way. And he says, write in to me, and write a letter to me, and I'll respond. Nope, not yet. <laughs> and I tell him, he said one time, well, when somebody could show me where God said that I have a son, right, then I will believe, right? Well, I did actually send Psalms 2-7, and I still haven't got a response. In Psalms in 2 and in 7, if we go there, it says this. It says, speaking of the anointed one, in Psalms 2-7, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, right? If you were a Jew back here at this time, they knew you were talking of Messiah, Jesus Christ, the, mm -hmm. the, the one that we believe in, right? Let us break their bond, uh, bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, Thou art my son. Yeah. This day I have begotten thee. Okay? This is speaking in verse 12. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, kindled a little bit. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Guess Amen. who that is? Amen. That's us, guys. Amen. So I wrote that to that rabbi. I said, well, it does say that. In Psalms 2 and 7, who is that? That's the anointed one. That's the Messiah. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not rocket science when you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but without the Holy Spirit, you have no understanding. No. You sense. don't know, right? Right. Don't listen to anybody that doesn't have the Holy Spirit. They're just mm -hmm. going to guide you to hell. He's preaching. Amen. Yes, and sir. again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels worship him. You know, the Jews actually crucified Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he received worship. Right. Paul said, okay, he said he made himself equal with God. He yeah. said he didn't consider it robbery to do so, right? right? Right. If anybody ever tells you that Jesus didn't wor receive worship, they lie. Yeah. And the Bible says that, that, the, that, that God said, bring it, him the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels worship. Of God worship him because he is God. Amen. In Jewish culture, they knew Shema, the Lord our God is one, right? That's in right. Zechariah, right? It says there's one throne in heaven, right? And only one sits on him. And it also says in that same chapter, which I'm gonna go there now, which is uh why God uh, actually took me there uh yesterday. Uh, he says here, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day, and this is speaking of the Lord ruling and reigning over the earth, which we know. Jesus has something to do with that, right? Mm -hmm. He says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as plain, right? From as far as you can see, Geba uh, to Ramon, right? And in that same chapter uh, before, in verse 12, verse 10, it says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Spirit of grace. Who is that? The Holy Spirit, right? Yes. We have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And he says right here, he says, Upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me, me, right? Jesus isn't born yet, yet, right? Whom they have pierced. Well, I know one person that got pierced, right? Jesus. Right. But check it out right here what he says. And they shall mourn for him. Okay? So it goes from me to him, right? Elohim, let us make man in our own image, right? Whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him 
as one mourneth for his only son. Yes. And shall be in bitterness for him, and one is that is bitterness for his firstborn. Jesus was the firstborn from from all creation, and he was the firstborn from the grave. Amen. Amen. He's the resurrection. That's and it right. says right here, and the angels he said unto them, maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Mm. If you're a minister in this house, you are a flame of fire, Amen. and you better be yes. starting a fire wherever you go. Amen. Yes, right. Because if you ain't starting a fire, you're not bringing the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. And we're ministers just like the angels are ministers, and just like Jesus was a messenger to the world through God. He was God's voice. He was God's mouthpiece. Amen? Amen. And we are to look like him. Amen? But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus' kingdom shall never come to pass. In Psalms 45, 6 and 7, it says this. Are you guys okay? Yeah. I know that I need some. You need a water? Yeah. My, my voice is out from the jail earlier. I'm going to start squeaking right now. Squeak, <laughs> squeak. Well, at least you'll still be speaking. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, I really just want you guys to know, honestly, that God loves you. And that's the truth. He does love you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have sent his son. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. You know? And he says right here, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Jesus' kingdom shall never come to an end. And if Jesus is the king of Jews, which you go to the Old Testament, you see that God says, I'm the only king, right? I'll take you there. Uh, I know my Bible. In Isaiah, God says this even, okay? If Jesus is a kingdom, the point I'm trying to say, if he has a kingdom that will last forever and he's always going to be king, he has to be God. Yes. Because right. God himself says this in the scriptures. He says, 42. Isaiah verse chapter 42. Well, in 43, I could even read that. He says in, in verse 10, he says, Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me. There was no God for him, neither shall there be after me. You see that? Mm -hmm. He says, I, even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Why would he send Jesus to be Lord and Savior if he wasn't the same God? Amen? Right. Yes. He says here, I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Ye before the day I am he, and there is none that can deliver you out of my hand. I will make, I will work, and who shall let it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. Who's our Redeemer? Jesus. Jesus. Right. The Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have set Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, uh, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord. The Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Amen. Who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Jesus. So, Christian, what I want you to understand is that when someone comes to you and tells you you don't got it all together in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they got it wrong. Right. Amen. Amen. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy Amen. fellows, the yes. other angels, Amen. the other creation. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To Amen. what? Not to his own glory, to the glory of the Father. Yes. When you bow your knee to Jesus, you are worshiping the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. He who rejects the Son is condemned already, right? right. But whoever receives the Son receives him who sent him. That's Amen? Right. Yes. And so... It says right here that Jesus had no iniquity in him, right? Yeah. And so if we cast out all of our, you know, wrongdoings and we act and, and emulate Christ Jesus, right? We have an inheritance, the Bible says in Hebrews. Amen. We have, we are heirs unto salvation. Amen. Yes. That's more exciting than the Rams yes. winning the Super Bowl, Amen. right? Yes. Yes. That we are heirs unto salvation through yes. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So it says right here that he hated iniquity. And this is what we need to, we need to abhor sin, right? 
In these last days, we're told to accept certain things because everybody's got their own way, yeah. right? And we got to love them, amen. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Right. But if but if they are not emulating the Father, then they're emulating their Father. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's the truth, amen? Right. Right. And he says he hated iniquity, therefore God, which he'll do to us, Jesus said, he said, I sat on my Father's throne with him. Those who persevere till the end, right, shall sit on my throne with me. That's right. Amen. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna be reigning with Jesus Christ right. one day if we hold fast to these notes here in this word in this epistle. It says, and they and he hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee. God will anoint us if we hate sin. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. It was always God's plan. Amen. Yeah. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as doth a garment, right? Like your Levi's that are fading away, right? <laughs> the, they're going to just die out eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Just so are you, right? You said that we're going to see the Lord, right? Yes. That's a warranty, guarantee, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. That's going to happen, That's gonna right? Happen. You're either going to be his friend or his foe. One of the two things is going to happen, but yeah. you are guaranteed to die. Yeah. And you are guaranteed to see God and be judged by God. And I say that there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. That's the word of God said. Amen. Amen. We have a covering over us. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ and his kingdom lasts forever. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them and they shall be changed. But thou art the same and thy years shall not fail. In verse 12, it's basically saying there that he will never stop being who he says he was. His kingdom is forever. Right. And as a vesture, thou shalt fold them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said at any time, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? And that's exactly what he said in verse 5. Which one of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? Right? None of them were born of a virgin. Yeah. Yeah. None of them were the immaculate conception, right? Jesus had his father's features, yeah. right? You know, you look like your dad, right? Jesus looked like his daddy, yeah. right? Because he had a heavenly father, amen? Yeah. We got to look like our daddy, amen? amen? But to which of the angels did he say at any time, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Who's the enemy of God? That's right, right? And so if we act like Lucy, we're going to end up where Lucy went or going. Yeah. I know he lost the keys to death, right? Yeah. He's not loose right now, yeah. right? He's not loose. Yeah. He actually is in bondage, right? Is, is that true or is he loose? I think he's loose. Is he? I think he's out there. But he's not in, he yeah. doesn't have dominion over no, the earth. Not, no, no. Yeah. So he's running. Let's say that. He's not loose. He's running. Yeah. And they are not, they are all ministering for spirits. Uh, spent forth to minister for uh, for them who shall be heirs of salvation. In Acts 16 and 31, I'll show you how to be an heir. Amen? Acts 16 and 31. You know, my life as a, as a Christian started, uh, you know, years ago. God actually called me into ministry years ago, but I didn't listen. You know, I didn't listen to the call of God, per se, until years later. You know, he was he was calling me, you know, through Team Challenge and places like that. He was calling me, but I was too stiff necked to listen, you know. And I had to go through all kinds of trials and tribulations uh, until he finally uh, got me to submit to him and, and, and to ask him to be Lord of my life, you see. And so in, in, in 16, Acts 16 and 31, it says this. It says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that shall be saved in thy house. I believe this. I believe that because of your choice on the Lord Jesus Christ, your sons, amen, are going to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Your daughters are going to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Your grandchildren and the generations that come after you because of your obedience are going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because people amen. emulate what they see, right? That's right. They emulate. Your children will emulate what they see. They will easily see their father like this, or they'll see their father like this, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And the ones that see their father like this have better chance, to, according to the word of God, right? Yeah. But in Revelation, 
Uh, it also says this in 20 and 12 that there was the books were opened and the names of those people whose names were not found in that book were cast in the lake of fire. Okay? Yeah. And so this Jesus that I preached today, crucified, right? Resurrected, right? Is sitting at the right hand of God and he's an advocate for everyone. Every single sinner, no matter what you've done. I just preached right now in the jails to people that I know by the color of their suits because I have correctional training, right? That they are not anybody that's probably going to be hanging around at your house anytime soon because of prejudices, right? And and wisdom out also. God has given us wisdom not to hang around with certain individuals, right? Mm -hmm. But they still got the gospel. That's right. It was still given to them That's because awesome. it was for Thank them. You, Jesus. Jesus loves them. That's right. right? That's Even right. when we hate or we don't love, he does. That's right. Amen. Amen. He isn't human. He's not a man that he should lie. That's he right. only tells the truth, right? right? And the truth is, is that he loves you. Okay. Amen. And so I just wanted you guys to know that, you know, times are going to get tougher. You know, uh, you know, we think that in the, in, in the United States, we got it hard. You know, yeah. I guarantee you this in the United States of America, you might say, well, you don't know. What I'm. Yes, I do. I was homeless. I was on drugs. I, I was a gang member. I was tore up from the floor up, right? Uh, dug out or whatever they call it. They were saying yeah. at Prince Chapel. Yeah. Uh, they had these different things and I was laughing. I was cracking <laughs> up about it, right? Yeah. This is the best place in the world to be homeless or in jail. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. It is. It's the truth. The church is growing faster in other countries than it is in the U.S. I heard a pastor say this. This gospel that I'm preaching today, right? Guess where the gospel is actually being preached the most and, and the church is growing the fastest? China. I was going to say, wow. oh. And you're like, Ooh. China. Yep. And the second, try to guess. Iran. Uh -oh. Iran. Oh. Iran. In a free country where we have no chains on our legs, right? We have nobody killing us or chopping our head off. The American church knows no suffering. We don't. That's right. Come on. We don't. Amen. We have an ability, and we're going to be held accountable for this, to preach this gospel to the lost and the unsaved. And if we don't, that's why I always say it's always good to see new faces. That's right? right? People that don't know God. If we just corral around a bunch of Christians all the time and the unbelievers are not getting saved, we're not doing what God has called us to do. We have nieces and nephews that don't know God. Right? Yeah. We have uncles and aunts perishing right now. But what are we doing? What are we doing? We're corralling around other Christians, hanging around like, like a country club. Yeah. Amen? We are the family of God. Amen? Yeah. We need to be around people of Amen. God. We need to be around other Christians. Yeah. But the gospel's got to go forth. The Great Commission is a command not given by me, but by him. Yeah. And let us preach it. Amen. Love yes. you guys. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Good and you know those churches, uh, those Chinese churches, I heard, they're being ran by 16, 17, 18 year old people. That's awesome. Underground, wow. right? That's awesome. Underground. Our youth, we need to pray for our youth. That's yes. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. And in Iran, the women are prophesying. Amen. What an awesome day. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. That was an awesome, awesome, awesome message. Amen. And, uh, Amen. So before before we take communion, um, you know, you heard that Jesus was God and is God. Amen. The only one that can save humanity Amen. is the one who created humanity. Because he looked at all the depravity. God sees every broken home. He sees every alcoholic home. He sees every foster kid that doesn't have a dad. God sees every woman that is involved in some type of trafficking. God sees every drug addict that's putting needles in their arms. God sees young people killing Young people, beloved, in our nation, God sees everything. Amen. And he saw the depravity of mankind. And what did he do? He said, I will become one of them. Amen. And I will suffer with them. Amen. And I 
will reckon myself to them by myself. The only one that can save humanity is God. That's right. Great is this mystery that God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, Hallelujah. preached among the people. Amen. And if you're here today Amen. and you need to be saved, listen to me. Church cannot save you. Your religion cannot save you. Your money cannot save you. Right. Your good works cannot save you. That's right. There's only one thing that can save your soul from the power of death and the judgments that's going to come. And it will come. Amen. Jesus will come back someday. The judgments of God are real. That's right. Yes. And he is coming soon. He is coming yeah. soon. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. But it's not too late. Amen. For you to receive this free gift. Thank you. Lord. You cannot earn this gift. You cannot be good enough. Amen. But you can accept the free gift of God. It cost him everything. Amen. And you can believe. And when I say believe, I'm not just talking about believing with your head. Amen. We're talking about believing with your heart. Right. We're talking about believing with your lifestyle. That's right. Amen. 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 We're talking about really believing. All of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're talking about telling God that we're sorry. That we turn from our sin. Amen. Ask Him for strength. But if you're here today, I want us to examine our heart as we take communion. Communion is symbolic Amen. of the blood that was shed for you when you drink that cup. Of the body that was broken for you. Amen. And as you remember that body, you remember that it cost Him everything. You remember that they put in him in a scarlet robe. Yes. You remember that they beat him in the face and said, prophesy you who's the one who hit you. You remember that he died for your sin. Thank you, Lord. Yes. For yes. my sin. Yes. And thank him. And as we take communion, I want us to look at our hearts. And if there's anybody here that needs to receive this free gift, you can believe. You could turn from disbelief to belief. You could believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Yes. Yes. That God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Amen. You say, I can be saved. I'm a drug addict. I said, you tell God, why do you love me? I'm a drug addict, God. Yes. Why do you love me? I'm a sexual immoral person. Why do you love me? Yes. And time and time again, God showed me that he loved me. Yes. He loved me so much. And that same love I seen in my dad. That same love I seen in my mother. Amen. The same love I seen in my grandmother. Amen. That same love I see in you, church. The love of Jesus. That same love I see. If you're here and you need to be saved and you need to be forgiven, then you can. Amen. If you need a fresh commitment, you can. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross yes. and believe that he rose again on the third day because there is nobody who can defy death Amen. but God. Amen. There is no one who has power over the grave but God. Amen. That's right. And if you're here today, 
and you say, that sounds like a good deal to me. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. Thank you, Father. I got enough suffering in this life yes. as is. Yes. Yes. I want to go to heaven. Yes. Jesus. I want to be forgiven. Yes, Lord. I want to accept Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit draws near and draws nigh and convicts you and touches you in such an amazing way. Amen. You're here today. You say, I want that gift. I want to go to heaven, Ryan. If this old drug addict that got saved and forgiven, I don't do drugs anymore. And I could be saved, and you could be saved too. Yes. Amen. If he could save me, he could save you. Amen. If he could save Mark, who was a gang member, he could save you. Yes. If he could save anybody, if he could save a thief, Amen. a no good thief on the cross, Come on. he could save you too. That's right. Just ask. Just ask him. So just pray with me. Do you feel so that as a church family say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. And I believe that you have the power to save me from my sin. I believe that you are God. That you are God. He said that prayer. Your name is written in the book of life. And as we prepare for communion, I'm just going to play a song and we're just going to prepare. If you're listening online, you can grab yourself some grape juice or whatever you like. Grab yourself a piece of bread or some crackers and come take some communion with us if you like. Take some communion with us. And. This morning I was just teaching the kids about about the Egyptian, about the Egyptians, or rather the Pharaoh not wanting to release the Israelites. The Israelites are God's people. We are God's people, right? Yes. And God had to send those plagues to just to the for the Pharaoh to change his mind. So God loves those Jews, the Israelites, so much. And the same with us. He loves us so much that he's gonna redeem us. And he redeemed them. But this time, it was Jesus Christ that was sent to redeem us, not Moses. And that's a good thing. Amen? Don't you, Amen. Don't you agree? Amen. Amen. So, uh, with your bread, if you're ready. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. He is going to deliver us, and he has already delivered us. And as we did already examine ourselves before we eat this bread. And so... Uh, Let me just say say this in 1 Corinthians 11:23, as you hold the bread, cracker. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, gave thanks, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "This is my body, which is for you." Do this in remembrance of me. Now let us remember how he was nailed to that cross with a crown of thorns piercing through his forehead. With that pierce, with that with that uh, nails piercing through his hands and feet. 
Lord, I thank you for dying thank you, for God. me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord God. God. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And those 39 stripes represent all the sicknesses and pain that we're saved from. For by his stripes we were healed in Isaiah 53. Amen. By his stripes we were healed. We can claim healing from God in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Let's raise the, bread, uh, the, the cup right now. And says, the cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And every time I do this, I can remember that soldier just throwing that pig spear into the side of Jesus. And water and blood comes out of his side. And that blood, that precious blood of Jesus that redeemed us from all our sin, that reconciled us with the God the Father. Thank you, Lord. It's a wonderful thing to remember. Yes, yes. And we should never, we should never forget it. Thank that you. reconciliation with our God the Father. Thank you, Dad. We should value it. And as we value that relationship, let's turn away from any of our wicked life. Yes. Let's go straight, let's go forward for a new life in God. Amen. And let's just drink this cup, representing His blood in Jesus' name. Lord. Amen. Lord, I thank you. So good. I thank you, Lord. The memory of your suffering, God, is something that we want to just keep in our mind every time we do something wrong that we have to turn away from it. That every time we, we displease you, that we should be sorry about it. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> As we end with the psalm, ask Pastor Mark, you just go around and just pray for you. He's going to pray for you. Lord Jesus, from all you will that believe in the healing power of Jesus amen. Christ. Yes, Lord.
you will be called forgiven. And you will be called loved. And you will be called accepted. And you will be called loved. You will not be called abandoned. You will not be called forsaken. You will be called loved. And I give you a new name. It's a beautiful gift to convey it.